Will Bruce and Selena be able to capture Amanda Waller's mother box and deal a major blow to Task Force 7? And their absolute war on the superhero community? Well, let's hop into the pages of Batman issue number 152, a tie into the absolute power event, and find what happens next together, shall we? So then, picking up directly from where the last issue left off, Batman and Catwoman had gone looking for the mother box that Amanda Waller was using to help run her massive anti-superhero operation, only for the two of them to end up taking a very impromptu trip to the dead ruins of Planet Zarni, where the Suicide Squad was already waiting to ambush them. Making matters worse is Batman's own internal strife right now. He has so much he wants to say to his love Selina, so little time to do it, and he fears that he may never get another chance after this. Hell, in a nice bit of continuity, Chip Zdarsky declares that despite their almost 80-year history together, this is actually the first time Batman and Catwoman have ever been to space together. With the deck thoroughly stacked against them, Batman wastes absolutely no time getting started, deciding to single out Gunsmith as the weakest member of this brand new Suicide Squad, and I mean, yeah, he's not wrong, he's just a man with a gun. In reality, though, Bruce isn't fighting to win right now, he's fighting to give Catwoman a chance to actually uncover couple the mother box from Amanda Waller's security measures. Along the way, though, Selina does end up duking it out with Black Alice. Isn't it interesting that the only two women on the good guy and the bad guy team ended up fighting each other? Though it's honestly not much of a fight at all, Catwoman realizes that for Black Alice to do her magic, she needs to maintain concentration, so she basically home alones her into submission. Outside, Batman continues to work his way through the squad. He realizes that Bizarro is easily the most dangerous member of this team but his childlike brain could also serve as a nice distraction. Basically, Batman ends up using Bizarro as a human shield, and after he gets hit enough by his own side, Bizarro gets all pissed off at his own people. Or does he get happy at his own people? Again, Bizarro is weird. Of course, Bizarro still isn't down for the count yet, meaning that Batman is going to have to duck and dive around him if he wants to live long enough to help Catwoman with the hack. Along the way, too, Batman also stops to tell Archie Waller that his aunt Amanda is completely insane, and also if he was smart, he would have realized that he just walked through the Waller family mausoleum, including Archie's own mother, and maybe this should be the wake-up call that Deadeye really needs right now. After that, we're treated to a shockingly genuine little exchange between Batman and Catwoman as they both try and hack the security measure to release the box from each of their own individual ends. There's really only two ways this situation can end. Either Batman and Catwoman walk away with the box, or they both end up dying in the cold vacuum of space. Bruce does everything in his power to finally spit it out to Selina how much he loves her, how much he cares, and how sorry he is that it never seems to work out between the two of them. Catwoman clearly knows this is what he's trying to say, but deflects with a little bit of a joke, saying, don't worry, Batman, if you die here, I will be sure to avenge you in ways that will make you very disappointed. It's at that point they manage to wrestle away the box, but in doing so actually drop the shield around the mausoleum. This is bad, of course, because the only thing left on the blasted hellscape that is planet Zarnia is flying scorpions. They're just like regular scorpions, only there's millions of them, they can fly, and they live in space. This turns out to be just enough to get the members of the Suicide Squad to turn tail and run. And you might think that would finally be the end of Batman and Catwoman's problems. Mission accomplished, they can all go home now, only, no, not so much. The mother box and its corresponding boom tubes correspond to thought. The only problem is Batman's mind is elsewhere right now, as he only just now, much too late, comes to the realization that if Waller was hiding the mother box in space and behind a protective force field, it must have been because she was trying to hide it, and this way, if the force field ever came down, it would mean that no one could have it. Why would that be? Well, because Darkseid would be alerted to the mother box's presence and hunt it down and anyone else who might be around the box at the time. Meaning that Batman and Catwoman just narrowly managed to escape an Omega Sang. Action, Batman even saying in his internal monologue, yeah, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> well, back on Earth, the Dark Knight admits that he's been so caught up in all of this Amanda Waller Amazo business, he never stopped for a second to think that things could actually end up getting worse with Darkseid. But hey, that's a problem for future Batman. In fact, it might be a problem for a completely different Batman, because this seems to be planting the seeds for the brand new upcoming Absolute DC. But hey, what about Selina and Bruce's romantic relationship, you might be wondering? Well, it's seems that the box had the idea to drop them not at the Batcave or in Catwoman's bunker, but instead on the beach from the end of the Tom King era of Batman stories. You remember the one where they admitted it didn't really
really matter if they met on a boat or if they met on a rooftop or when they met in continuity because every time they meet it's like they're meeting each other for the first time. Yeah, barf all this time later, barf. But don't worry, Zdarsky has his own take on the bat and cat romance and I'm happy to say it's actually a lot closer to my own personal headcanon. Selena says that maybe they will never get their happy ending, maybe never really be together. But, you know, does anyone ever really get a happy ending? No, life goes on. We take the moments of joy that we can. With the people we love most and keep it close to our hearts because, hey, every ending is itself a brand new beginning. And also, you know, comic books are sequential stories that never actually end. So, you know, best to keep your romantic options wide open, especially if you are a character who's been around for 80 plus years. And so that was Batman issue number 152, everybody, and overall I thought it was a fine enough conclusion to a fine enough little two-part event tie-in. One that I was actually very surprised to feature the return of Darkseid and the early signposting for everything we're going to be seeing in Absolute DC, which apparently is taking place right after the end of this event. Of course, I don't think it's that or the big fight with the Suicide Squad anyone is going to remember or be talking about when it comes to this story for a while being no, people are going to be talking about the ongoing romance, or lack thereof, between Batman and Catwoman, and like I said, I actually much more agree with what Zdarsky has to say here than, say, Tom King did before him. You all might have your favorite comic couples, you may love to see them together, you may love to see them in love, and chances are you'll probably get that at some point, and then they'll all probably take it away from you too, such is life. Don't get mad about it, just enjoy the moments of closeness when you can get them in the stories that feature the characters and relationships that you like, and if it bothers you that much, hey, become a writer. And then you can ship as much as you want to your heart's content. Overall, though, I would give this one a 7.5 out of 10. Again, it's not necessary reading or anything, but it's definitely a cut above. A lot of other event tie-ins I've read, so, you know, credit where credit is due on that front. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye